we're going to look at the company's valuations now and starting with Aspen. We're not talking about cheap stocks here, Warren. No, definitely not. And for due reason or due cause? Look, as I said, I mean, they're both actually quite defensive shares and you're generally going to pay that premium to get into a defensive share. Um, Aspen trading now around 211 Rand. Um, you know, it's, it's all-time high, but it's run very hard to get there. And there's, you know, if it can actually capitalize on these markets and these ventures it's making into these markets, there's no reason that the share won't keep going up. And if you look, if you, Warren, just step back a little bit there. If you look at this graph since 2009, you haven't actually really had a significant opportunity to get in. I mean, there's slight pullbacks here mm. and there, mm. but steadily the stock has been appreciating. Yeah, because its earnings have grown as well as its reputation and its standing in investment markets. So Stephen Saad owns 12% of this. You can come back and stand next <laughs> to me. Don't feel you've got to stand next to me. You can do the board. maths on that. 12% of companies now with 100 million. So his personal stake is worth 12 billion rands. He's a dollar billionaire as well. That's nice. But I think it's going to continue. Glaxo, we mentioned a couple of times now, has indicated there's another whole chunk of their portfolio, sort of 3 billion pounds worth of potential sales that they might either look to offload or relist. So you're saying there's no stopping this story and the growth in the share price. Is that look, what you're saying? It's always dangerous to come in, you know, at this stage. But I just think the company is much larger, much better footprint. I think Stephen is still very well motivated. He's got good people around him. So I think it's going to be one of the sort of farmer success stories and I think it's going to attract a bigger and bigger international following and it's not impossible that it could do a big deal with Glaxo in the future. So still a buy for me. New money into Aspen at current levels, Warren. I'm, I'm pushing you guys on this. Uh, I, would, I would put new money into Aspen. Um, it's, if I was weighing up between the two, I'd probably be looking at... Right, wait, wait, don't give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now we're looking at Discovery's valuation. <laughs> So let's get that graph up and we've got a very similar scenario here. Yep. We've got an all-time high, pretty much, no, drop back slightly from its all-time high on Discovery. So slightly different corporate trajectory and obviously over the years it's rolled out these additional uh, legs to the business, the insurance, the investment operation, now the short-term thing and so on. So it really just does seem to be able to continue moving from strength to strength. I don't know what's happened in the last couple of months though because it seriously got the motors on from 40 to 80 where it trades now. So again, it does make me a little bit nervous, but I, I think that the story is, is, is out there, it's defendable, the opportunities are there. I guess one has to be a little bit more positive about the recovery in the UK and the success of the China thing. Do you share Paul's nervousness at around 80 Rand on Discovery? Uh, I think it's run hard. I think I saw the inclusion into the top 40 and that's had some effect on that. You've got funds now starting to put the bigger money behind the company. Um, I'm, I'm not so nervous of Discovery at this level. I think it's a strong company that's still going up. It's a, I mean, it's, it's not a cheap PE, but it's still trading on a PE around 18, uh, which is still so before to go we So before we go to trade of the day, are there any other companies that we should consider, considering you've now given us a broad ma mandate Excellent. of healthcare? Look, in our international portfolios, we have clients owning Johnson & Johnson, which is kind of like the behemoth in the space. It's got everything. It's got pharma, it's got medical devices, and it's got consumer products. Uh, there are others, you know, the ones that I've mentioned, the European giants are worth noting. There's also a lot of very good companies that do medical devices and biotech in the U.S. As far as the local market is concerned, don't forget the hospital groups because they've also got good markets. Medicare, Medi-Clinic, we've exactly. recently chatted through all those. Some of them have got their healthcare. own debt issues and so on and so forth. But if you want an emerging markets play in the healthcare space, I think these are the two best Do ones. you have to have exposure to healthcare in your portfolio? I, I would say yes. Um, I think, you know, from the defensive point of view, markets at all-time highs, these are steadily moving up. I'd be putting some money in there. 